Hello everyone, thanks for joining the Ethereum.org April Community Call. On this call, we'll mostly be focusing on <clears throat> some of our ongoing and upcoming Q2 initiatives that we'll be focusing on in the coming months. In case you've missed it, we just published our Q2 roadmap um, this week and it's full of interesting work. We're all very excited to get to. I've just shared the link in the chat. Um, so feel free to check out our Q2 roadmap and reach out if you'd like to get involved with any of these initiatives. Before we go through the agenda for today's call, though, let's start with the usual clarification that this is a community call for Ethereum.org, not for the Ethereum Foundation or the Ethereum Protocol. We want to use these calls to keep our community up to date with what we've shipped, what we're working on, and how you can get involved, as well as hear from all of you. So feel free to share any input, feedback, ideas, or questions you might have in the chat or in any of the relevant channels here on Discord. So here's a quick overview of what we'll cover on today's call. First of all, Joshua has a very special announcement and introduction to the newest member of our team. Next up, Joseph will be talking about how we've revamped the upgrade section on the site and introduced the new roadmap section that covers the Ethereum protocol roadmap. After that, Corwin will cover GitHub maintenance and our approach to keeping up with all of the issues in PRs in the ethereum.org repo. Corwin will also introduce two new features we'll be working on, specifically the community call widget, which will show previous and upcoming community calls on the site, and the learning quizzes hub, with, where we're planning on improving and expanding the learning quizzes currently available on the site. Next up, I'll be talking about our efforts to move beyond translating just text and how we'll be approaching localization of images and infographics on the site, as well as dubbing videos to make visual content more accessible as well. And finally, Joshua will give an overview of the writing cohort that we announced yesterday and provide some more details on that. And as usual, some quick announcements and call outs at the end in case any of you are attending Ethereum conferences next month and want to meet up with us. Before we get into it, I also wanted to mention that the POAP distribution for this call will be a bit different today. So everyone who wants to claim the POAP will need the POAP app on their mobile. So if you don't have the app installed, Please take some time, um, visit the App Store, download the POAP app, uh, set it up by adding your address or ENS so you will be ready to claim when the time comes. If you need any help with downloading or setting up the app, please let us know in the chat. And with that out of the way, we can get started. So at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Joshua and Isabella. Hey everyone, hope you can hear me okay. Um, yeah, just a brief one from me, and maybe I'm not sure if Isabella will want to say anything, but I'm super excited to introduce our new community lead, Isabella. The, the, the hiring process. The hiring pro oh, 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 there you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Could you mute yourself for a second, Isabella? Yes, can you all hear me okay? Okay. Uh, Isabella, I've temporarily muted you because we had a bit of echo going on. But um, yeah, as I was saying, yeah, the hiring process for this position um, was pretty intense, to say the least. We had over, I believe, 600 applications for the role, did probably hundreds of interviews with tons of amazing people. Um, I know there were 
many, many people in the community who are very excited about this role. And it was definitely hard for us to disappoint so many awesome people along the way. Yeah, so if you did apply for the role, just know we probably do still think you're awesome. Still, we are really happy with the choice we made, and we think that Isabella will be a great addition to the core team uh, with our, our understanding of Ethereum and its ecosystem, as well as the, the passion she has for helping Web3 communities thrive. Uh, so moving forward, Isabella will be working hard to make her community more connected, more engaged. You'll be the go-to person as we shape the future of the community. So if you're interested in getting more involved in some way, or if you have feedback you want to share, let her know and we'll, we'll see how we can help. Uh, so I hope I speak for everyone and giving Isabella a big warm welcome. We're stoked to have her on the team and can't wait to see the amazing things we'll be able to accomplish. Um, so yeah, welcome Isabella. Feel free to add as little as, as, little as, as you want. As you want. Thanks, Amelia and Joshua. Can everyone hear me okay? Or is it still some echo? We can hear, we can you. hear you. Okay, good. I can just so hear you. That's, that's all. <laughs> Thanks, Amelia and Joshua, for the intro. Hi, everyone. I'm super happy to be here and to chatting, uh, to chat with you all. My name is Isabella. I just joined the Ethereum.org core team, and my main focus. Um, like Joshua mentioned, we'll be coordinating all things related to community. I've been working in the Web3 space since 2021, and I actually got to know Ethereum.org last year, thanks to Lucas' presentation at DevCon Bogota um, about the translation program. So as you can probably tell, English is not my mother language. I can fluently speak to variants of Portuguese, and I know a little bit of Spanish as well. It's a bit rusty, but I can speak some words. So supporting the community um, in the efforts of translating and making content, educational resources, and overall opportunities available for everyone is definitely a very dear cause to Ethereum.org. Um, the way the I see Ethereum.org, it's much more than this core team that's uh, in this call right now. It's much more than a website. It's a community. It's a community contributing through various areas um, with the skills and the knowledge each one of you have towards the advancement of the Ethereum ecosystem. So in this infinite garden, uh, my role is pretty much to be a gardener. Uh, helping you all, guiding, um, like showing the ways that like you folks can contribute, um, listening your feedback, uh, ideas. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, with any contribution, ideas, feedback. How do you want to get involved? You for sure hear a lot from from us very soon. But like I said, Ethereum.org is a community and you're definitely part of it and we need you all to make things happen. So, and you'll definitely hear a lot um, towards uh, today through the community call about a roadmap for uh, Q2 and so on. So excited to be chatting with you all very, very soon. And thank you so much for the warm welcome. Thank you and welcome to the team, Isabella. Next up, we've got Joseph talking about the updates that we've made to the upgrades pages and how that's turned into the Ethereum protocol roadmap section. Over to you, Joseph. Thanks, Luca. Uh, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, yeah, okay. so. This epic aimed to make accessible content that explains all the upcoming upgrades coming to Ethereum in the future, spanning the near term all the way into the far future. Um, the reason is because it can be difficult to grasp all the various ways that Ethereum is expected to change. And part of that is because the upgrades are often very technical and related to specific pieces of the protocol or sometimes just because they're shrouded in kind of inaccessible jargon, right? So we try to, we try to address that issue by designing a whole new section of the website 
that goes through all the major upgrades that we expect to see in Ethereum's future and explain them in a way that guides new users from the highest level concepts right down to the low level details in a kind of welcoming way. So practically what that means is that we have this new roadmap landing page that you can see uh, on my screen right now. And this is where you can, you can kind of discover why Ethereum has a roadmap and how it's managed and why it's important. And we have these four cards on the page where um, you can see the benefits that these upgrades on the roadmap are going to deliver to Ethereum users. And if you want more information about how those user, bene how those user benefits are going to work, you can click through. So for example, click through on cheaper transactions and it takes you into this slightly more detailed page. Um, and you can you know, understand the specific problems that are being addressed and at a high level, the solutions that we're expecting to be implemented to, to, to resolve them. Right, so from those pages, you can also click through again into some more detailed technical information about specific upgrades. And these are the pages where we sort of get into the nitty gritty of EIP numbers and digging into parts of the protocol that are being changed and how they're being changed um, at much finer resolution than, than in the previous pages. And then if you really want to get even more technical still, those pages should provide enough context and conceptual knowledge that you can go and actually read the EIP documents or some technical documentation or maybe even some of the client code or something to, to really, really grok the fine details. So that was the idea with this epic to guide people through from the very high level introductory information about Ethereum's upgrades right through to the, uh, the low level technical details. We've tried to make it all as aesthetic as possible and lay them out in a, in a kind of user-friendly way and give a good experience to, especially to new uh, beginner Ethereans. And um, Nuno's also been experimenting with some new AI illustrations using Midjourney that are going to be pushed onto these pages very soon just to make it look even nicer. Okay, that's it. Um, happy reading. Remember that these pages are pretty fresh. So there are probably improvements that can be made. And if you're inclined, then please, please come and get involved on GitHub and look forward to seeing any community contributions. Thank you very much. And back to you, Luca. Thank you, Joseph. Great work on revamping this section of the website and a big plus one to um, the call out that if people want to read through this these pages and end up spotting a typo or a potential improvement prs and issues in our repo are always very very welcome next up well we've got corwin talking about a number of things so github maintenance community call widget and learning quizzes hub take us away corwin need to unmute myself can you guys see my screen okay Yes. Awesome. All right. Hey, everyone. Um, so one of our epics that we had last quarter that we'll be also carrying over as GitHub maintenance never ends um, was a GitHub maintenance epic. So part of what we did last quarter was release some actual documentation on what our issue triage process um, should and will continue to look like. Um, so. Basically, we've outlined what um, what it takes for an issue to be taken out of needing triage and the assignment process for whether it's a core team or a community member working on um, an issue at any given time. So I'll share these links after um, just because I'm sharing my screen kind of weird. But um, just so you know, we've yeah launched a GitHub issue triage process that we're looking to follow. We've also added um, a deploy and pull request review process, which kind of outlines the different types of contributions we get at any given time on the repo and kind of an expected timeline on what we aimed to do uh, reviews for with those different types. So not all PRs are created equally. Some take less time than others to review. And we've tried to outline a fair um, and accurate kind of like timeline on which we aim to um, deliver these reviews on. Now, 
we say that, but looking at our numbers, uh, we have 77 open pull requests, 283 issues. Are we actually maintaining the repo? I think that's a fair question to ask. Um, and we've done, just looking at uh, some of our GitHub activity in the last month, just outlined that we have been maintaining it and we still have more to go. Um, at any given month, we have roughly 100 um, active members, and it's kind of leveled off, especially with the um, bear market of <laughs> that we're currently living through. But um, we have roughly 100 members at any given month contributing to ethereum.org. Um, and these have to do with individual PRs and issues opened by contributors. So as you can see, we get roughly 100 pull requests from contributors every month, as well as um, I think if I go to the bottom here, I think it's a better graph, which outlines. So we have, yeah, like I was saying, about 100 pull requests opened every month by community members and about 100 opened by uh, the core team. So thinking about that, that's about 200 pull requests a month that we get coming in at any given time. Um, 77 open, and that's been the case for a few months at this point. I think we can say we're doing a pretty good job at maintaining the GitHub at this point. Still have to do some more work on um, allocating resources to this, and that has been something we talked about and we'll be doing in Q2 and moving forward is making sure that the core team spends a bit more time allocating um, some of their time to helping maintain the GitHub repository. That being said, though, these numbers look high, but I think it paints a different picture when you look at um, how active our community and how active this project is. Um, if we get 200 pull requests a month and we're sitting at 77 months later, I think we're doing a pretty good job still maintaining this repo. Um, but that paints a picture of what we did last quarter. What are we looking to do moving forward? Um, I've already mentioned that we're going to be adding more resources to helping maintain this. But we also want to kind of add some clarification to the community when they're interacting with our repository. So some of the things that that looks like is we'll be auditing our tagging system here, or labels, I guess, what they're called in GitHub, but auditing our labels and looking to improve the GitHub actions that label our issues and pull requests. This will make it easier for um, whether it's contributors or the core team looking to review things, um, quickly being able to filter down into different areas of the repo that maybe they uh, have more expertise in and can, can find where their time would be best spent easier. Other things we're going to be looking into is adding GitHub Actions to actually share these triage and review processes on pull requests and issues themselves to help communicate and set better expectations for um, everyone in the community as they're contributing. Um, but that's largely been like, yeah, where we've gone and where we're going when it comes to GitHub maintenance. And again, I think it was really cool to kind of come back and look at this graph of um, comparing <laughs> literally what's open by the community and what's open by the team. And we're basically at like a 50-50 split at this point, which is pretty, uh, pretty incredible, honestly. Like we get a lot of community contributions and that kind of shows how much you guys help drive the site as much as the core team does. Um, so that's all I have to touch on with GitHub maintenance. Next up, um, I'll talk about the community events widget that we're looking to add. Um, I was hoping to get this done for today, but I did not, unfortunately. Ran into some issues with Google APIs, but um, an overview of what we're looking to build here is a widget that's going to start living on at least the homepage of Ethereum.org but we'll be able to put in other places. And what this widget is going to basically do is call out when our next call, of, a community call of some sort is, whether it's, um, or, well, the next call that we're going to be hosting, whether it's a community call, a design community call, office hours, whatever that looks like. What we're going to do is be putting this into a calendar, pulling that data, and displaying it in this component. That'll allow you guys to see what's coming up, also will allow you to take these events and add them onto your calendar in case that is something that um, is beneficial and helpful for anyone trying to plan their days. And then after this, I'm also presenting on our learn quizzes. So as some of you, if you've been coming to our community calls regularly, 
probably know. And if you don't, we have um, quizzes at the end of a number of pages on ethereum.org. And the idea behind these were to basically take the content that was on a page, build a quiz around that content to help make sure that a user who came and read this content understood what they just read. So these quizzes are built off of the content that you would see on a given page, not necessarily just like random questions um, about a topic. So as long as there's content to support a question, that's what you'll see in a quiz. We had relatively good success coming with this. We've had uh, well, relatively, we've had pretty like tremendous success with it. We have tens of thousands of people who have taken these quizzes since we launched it in, I believe it was November or December last year. And um, from there, we're looking to kind of build on top of what we've done with the quizzes and extend this into a quiz hub. So instead of needing to visit individual pages, um, you'll then be able to just come to a quiz hub and see all the quizzes that we have on ethereum.org. And the idea is that um, we're looking to build more interactivity into ethereum.org. And by building out this I guess, like hub for you to test your knowledge. This will be a step for us to like validate building user interactivity on Ethereum.org more. Um, this also allows you to get a quick glimpse of how you've done on previous quizzes, um, see what quizzes you haven't done, and allows you to like find content on the site and quizzes to test your knowledge on the site that maybe you didn't know was there before. Um, so we're excited to work on this this quarter and get this shipped out so that we can have a hub to build on. Um, moving forward with this, we're going to be opening up a new issue template um, around adding quiz content onto the website, as well as a contributing guide for how to add quiz, quiz content onto the website. So while we may be taking on building this hub, we're definitely looking for contributions on adding quizzes throughout the website um, moving forward so that this hub can be fully fleshed out with Quiz, uh, quizzes on all our pages. Um, that's all I got, so I'll be passing this back to Luca, but thanks, everyone. Thanks, Corwin. Exciting stuff coming to ethereum.org. Next up, it's uh, my turn. And as you're probably used to by now, I'll be talking about translations. If you have been part of our community for some time, you'll know that we take localization very seriously and strongly believe that providing educational resources in multiple languages is a simple yet impactful way of educating more people about Ethereum and onboarding more people to the space, regardless of the language they speak. The result of our commitment to localization is the fact that Ethereum.org is currently available in 54 languages and non-English page views account for over a quarter of all visits to the website. This year alone, and it's not even end of April yet, we've had over 1 million unique page views on the site in languages other than English. This clearly shows the demand for educational resources in other languages is there and people want to read and learn about Ethereum in their native language. So this quarter we are leveling up our efforts to provide content in different languages. The first such initiative is an exploration into translating all kinds of images and infographics. There's a lot of diagrams and infographics on the website but they're currently only available in English, which means when someone is viewing the site in another language, they might be able to understand all of the text since it's available in their language, but not the English images. Automatically using Google Translate or another similar translation feature is also not the easiest to use on images, as you would have to download the image in question, upload it to Google Translate, and then also trust that the machine translations are correct. So it's kind of a long-winded way of getting translations for images. To address this, we have compared different ways of localizing images of any kind, came up with a process, converted all of the existing images on the site that contain any text, 
into a translatable format and we'll be uploading these images for translation to Crowdin next week. So during the May source, co source content update. While we still have to do some work on the dev side to properly implement translated images in different languages, we expect to have the first batch of translated images on the site available sometime in May. Once we have an established process for translating images and adding them to the site, we'll also be able to add more visual elements like infographics and diagrams in the future, hopefully making some of the content more visually appealing for our international audience. If you are a one of our translators helping to translate the site content in Crowdin, you will soon see these images for translation in Crowdin, and translating them will be just as simple as straightforward as translating any other text. And if any of you are involved with other projects and would like to translate some of your visual content, also feel free to reach out to us. We're always happy to share any of our findings or help out with localization efforts of any kind. At this moment, I'm just gonna briefly share my screen so I can show you a very concrete example of this. So this is a regular image we have on the accounts page in the developer docs. This is the English version of the accounts page. So all of the text is in English, the image is in English. If we switch to, for example, Chinese, you can see this page is fully translated into Chinese, but the image is still in English. So that's the current state of things. That's where we're moving on from. Um, and we have a good example of a translated image already on the website. This was created by um, Wackero, and this is the merge infographic. So this is the merge page in English. The infographic is available in English, but once you change the language into Chinese, again, you can see the whole page is translated into Chinese, and so is the, is the infographic. So this is the state we want to get to with all images, infographics, diagrams, any visual content on the website, really. So this is coming up a lot of these images or all of these images are going to be available for translation starting next week. A lot of are already going to be translated sometime later on in May. And moving on, uh, the next epic that we'll be working on and I want to cover is video dubbing. So very similar to the previous point, we also link out to a lot of explainer videos on the site for simplified explanations of certain concepts and easier learning through visual content. Some examples of these include Finematics videos and other videos explaining basic blockchain concepts. Again, while a certain page might be available in a different language, the, the video we link out to is currently only available in English. But with the rising popularity, and quality of AI dubbing tools, we'll be comparing different options to transcribe, translate, and dub some of these videos in other languages. While the work on the video dubbing epic has not started yet, I'm personally very excited about the potential that tools like this can have for providing more accessible and inclusive content to everyone. At the moment, it's much easier to imagine a world where you open a video, select a language and listen to the video in your native language than even a couple of years ago. The tools for this already exist and some content creators are already using the technology to provide the videos they create in different languages, thereby making their content more accessible and also attracting new viewers who might not have been able to watch this content in English because of their limited fluency in the language. As part of this epic, we'll look into and compare all the different tools that enable video dubbing, create a process on how we want to handle this in a sustainable and scalable way, and just start dubbing some videos. 
the end goal of both of these epics is also quite similar, which is having the ability to provide any type of content in as many languages as possible. In my view, this is one of the easiest ways to help educate more people from all over the world about Ethereum. And when it comes to new technologies, everything starts with education. So if you'd like to get involved with this effort, for example, if you have experience with video dubbing or you are a content creator, feel free to reach out to us. And if you're simply someone who likes to learn by watching videos, I guess keep an eye out for a whole bunch of Ethereum videos becoming more accessible and available in different languages very soon. That's it for me on this, um, on these two epics. And moving on, we have Josh, who's going to be giving out some uh, PO apps and also sharing out, sharing more details about the writing cohort that we just announced yesterday. Um, over to you, Josh. Oh, thank you, Luca. Just sharing my screen. Oh. Um, yeah, so as Luca mentioned at the start of the call, we do need everyone to have their WAP apps on their phone. I know you can get it on the iOS store or on the Google Play store. I'm sure it's available other places as well. Um, but that is the only way to claim this WAP as far as I know. If anyone knows otherwise, then let me know. Um, but I've created a little guide for people. So if you get your apps or if you just look and then you can download your app later. Uh, it's fairly straightforward though. I just did it and found it a little bit frustrating. Um, so sorry about that, but uh, we're trying it for this time. Maybe we'll go back to the old way on the next call. So yeah, pull up app, and when you open it, there's this little mint button down the bottom, and you need to select the secret word, which will bring you to this screen here. Um, our secret word is welcome-Isabella. I'm just putting it in the chat as well. So if you put that word in and then hit mint, it will take you to this screen. And this here is the frustrating part. Um, basically, you need to select the numbers all the way up to a thousand. It only takes like a minute, but I found it quite annoying. Um, so just keep going. If you make a mistake, it's fine. You've got lots of lives. Just don't use them all. And when you get to a thousand, which will take you a while, um, you'll get to the screen, like you know it's being minted, and eventually the mint will happen. So um, apologies again if this if you find this annoying. Also apologies to people who do not have the Pro app app or don't have a phone that they can download it on. Uh, bit of an oversight on our end. Hopefully everyone can get their claim link. If you can't for some reason, maybe DM me and I can try and sort something out after the call. Um, but for now, this is the best way to do it. Um, cool. So I'll continue talking while people are claiming their POAT. <laughs> Math in the morning. Yeah, indeed. OK, on to the next thing. This one I'm really excited about. So. Ethereum.org is running a writing cohort. We've partnered with Taptive to run a three-week cohort where a bunch of Ethereum.org community members and core team members can come together, um, learn how to write better through writing tips and guides, get feedback and support from the people at Taptive or in the cohort, and hopefully have a good time. Quick word on Taptive. Um, active run writing cohort for communities. That's literally the elevator pitch. You can see from their website, it's all about teaching people how to write better. And I can imagine there, there are people here thinking, like, I don't care about writing. Why would this interest me? Um, I would say even if you don't want to be a writer or aren't trying to start a blog or something else like that, the writing cohorts can still be massively beneficial for just a couple of hours of time investment. Um, and the whole philosophy behind Taptive is this idea that clearer writing equals clearer thinking. You know, clearer writing is clearer thinking. 
Uh, I'm sure everyone here has used another person as a sounding board to develop an idea in their head. Similar sort of thing can happen when you write something out. So even if you don't want to write, but you want to articulate your ideas better, then this writing cohort could benefit you. Um, that being said, everyone has a writer. You text, you send DMs, you reply on Twitter. So definitely check it out. Personally, I participated in the Bankless writing cohort in September, I believe, last year. And I still rave about how much better it made my writing and even how I think about problems sometimes. Um, so the founder, Grant, he's helping facilitate it. He's an amazing teacher and writer. He'll be facilitating the whole cohort for us, making sure everyone has the support they need to get the most out of the experience. Um, so yeah, given the hard sell there, did I mention it's completely free? Um, Ethereum.org is as good a resource as it is because of thousands of people from the community who have devoted their time to improving it in some small way. So this is just one way we would like to give back uh, by helping community members improve the writing ability, get writing, better writing habits, develop clear thinking. You don't need any experience or skills in writing. If you are interested in improving your writing skills or hanging, up, uh, hanging out with a bunch of like-minded people from the community, then we would really love for you to join us. So I'll drop this link in the chat. Uh, it literally takes 30 seconds to sign up quicker than claiming your PO app. Uh, just drop in your Discord username and your email and we can get you on board just to the cohort, which starts on May 11. Look forward to seeing you there. Uh, I'll pass it back over to Luca. Thanks, Joshua. So that concludes our regular part of the call. We have some miscellaneous announcements and call-outs, mainly focusing on events. So May is going to be full of Ethereum conferences, hackathons, different events. Some members on the team are going to be at ETH Lisbon. Some members on the team are going to be at ETH Dublin. Some are going to be at Edcon in Montenegro. So if any of you are visiting any of those events, please reach out to us. Um, we'd be happy to meet up. At these events, if, if we do get more um, multiple community members, if we do get a larger part of our community there, we would also love to organize some some uh, hangout or a, an informal ethereum.org meetup or whatever form that takes. But um, yeah, if you'll be at uh, any Ethereum conference slash event in May, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'd be happy to meet up. And the, the last announcement is, as always, the May community call is going to happen at the end of May most likely the last Thursday in May. Um, we'll create the event and send out the announcement for that by the end of this week, most likely. So yeah, that pretty much concludes the community call. If anyone has any questions, feedback, input, ideas, anything for us, feel free to drop them in the chat or Speak up if if you want to, um, but yeah, happy to meet some of you in person at a conference next month potentially, and if not, see you all on the interwebs. Thanks for joining the community call, and see you all at the next 